Hello everyone and welcome in to the 2023 Samui Swine Classic 10 presented by Prodigy. We're on the island of Samui in Thailand. There's your king. Bilo has won this three out of the last three years he's been here. Tommy Lettinen though has played three times in Thailand and he's won all three. Scott Stokely along with Pachette, the new guy. We've got some sweet action coming to you guys. Buckle up, it's going to be a wild ride, I promise you that. As we're going to head over to hole one, this is an 11 hole course with a loop that we'll play through twice. So it's 22 holes, but truly just 11 that we're playing two times through to make up one round per day. And the pro move by Philo, not trying to put it in, it's so tempting to do here on hole one. The easiest and shortest hole on the course. You have the triple Mando that you must navigate through, but feels like such a solid ace run hole because it is, but you also don't want to be embarrassed by the idea of missing the hole either. So a running jump putt is certainly an option or a running throw there by Stokely. Not even getting it above basket height, so you know he's just playing for the birdie. And this is a Thai national, and some are saying the greatest Thai national disc golfer we've ever seen. I had seven, but I just lost one, so I have six. <laughs> yeah, I think it's about right. <laughs> Talking about the equipment needed for this weekend, not a lot. Especially if you're a powerful thrower. I believe Scott has something like two or three bergs, a felon, and a putter. That's it. So Tommy had come to Samui last year. He played in both this event as well as the Heiser Brownie on the south side of the island the weekend before. He won both of them back to back. Then he showed up this year and defended his title at the Heiser Brownie. So the three tournaments he's played in Thailand, he's been crowned champion. But as I said in the intro, Philo has won this event the last three years in a row that he's played it. The chat's going to tap in for his par. He hails out of Pattaya. Excited to see what his early career is going to look like, considering this is just his fifth PDJ tournament. He just became a member in the last few months. Philo's forehand up to the left side is going to be a little short. I'll try not to repeat it too many times, but hole two and hole four are Probably your two bonus birdies on this course. Hole two maybe not isn't nearly as difficult as four, but it's definitely, when you look at the stats, it's definitely going to be one of the tougher gets just because the left to right bend along with the congestion here in terms of all the trees. Or you could just go with the lefty backhand missing everything and that's perfect for Pichette. Scott holds off for a little scooter distraction and solid putt from circle two. an old tree that Philo is next to that has continued to deteriorate over the last few years that we've been out here and it's a really good landmark. If you get to that or past it, that's one of the things you can see from the tee. You recognize that that's a pretty good shot. Pachat has gone deep, leaving himself inside four or five meters.
at 262. I believe this is the third longest hole on the course. Hole four, as I was just referencing, is the second longest, but definitely the most difficult. And then hole five is about the same distance, a little over 300. So a very short, very technical course that you guys, if you're new here. Hole three plays as an island, and Nigel and Luke have really decided to give you guys less of an island to land on this year. That's on the island, it's safe. And a very unconventional <laughs> route here for Scott. He goes out and around, but he's going to stay on the island and be safe. Excuse me, I'll clarify. Unconventional from my perspective, as I've never seen anyone go with a forehand out and around that tree before. And Pachette is too far right. That doesn't find the island. So you'll go to the red coconuts. Those are your drop zone indicators. They're on a number of holes out here. You see one right there. But the red coconuts indicate your drop zone. And yes, that is a very, very pissed off goose. Does someone know how to handle it? <laughs> Uh, uh, Tommy, I don't think there's a way to handle it. We we just deal with it. And that goose has been here for a number of years and is very protective of that area. It'll come into play throughout the weekend, I'll promise you that. It's a Friday afternoon as this tournament had kicked off. Saw some early scorching scores in the morning that came in from the Masters division. Shasta Chris, along with David Mora, both putting together some solid scores. They had no inclement weather to deal with. And yeah, I'm foreshadowing a little bit. Uh, regardless, the scores were incredible. Do not get me wrong. I'm not trying to take anything away. Uh, they both shot 14 under on the 22 holes during this opening round. And just like that, we do have a little bit of a drizzle, almost a sprinkle that's happening at the moment as we're over here on four at 302 feet. And that pushes forward a pretty good result there for Scott. Anytime you get, if you can somehow get past that last bunch of trees, you're going to be happy with it every single time. Short, but still a look. Oh, and perfect. And from this position, that's the only shot Philo really has. He's got a low ceiling. You're just trying to punch it up and walk away with the par. Here's Stokely. Oh, and dead center chain. This guy hasn't missed. He's four for four to get the round started, including the big bonus here on four. Might be the one time you'll find someone taller than Stokely on a card. I think Tommy is seven foot three, maybe seven four. Chat on the board. <laughs> of all birdies to pick up in the first four holes, that's not one that you would expect. And Philo will walk away with a par. So still very impressive to see. Two under out of the four on this card. And here's where the course takes a change. 
In previous years, we would head straight to the right and go to the long open hole, or relatively open hole, the only par four. However, now we're moving over to this one, which you've seen this hole before. And the rain has picked up even more. I believe this used to play as hole number eight in previous years, but you'll see where a few holes were added. Hole five has OB on the left side and deep of the basket. And that's inches from being perfect. <laughs> So this hole is just a meter longer than the previous hole, and it's by no means a gimme. Clearly the distance isn't the challenge, it's just a matter of navigating through the right tunnel. On the previous hole, it is exponentially more difficult to, to throw the 302 feet that's required. Nice little backhand approach for Philo. Looks like a par is in store for him. We've seen Tommy close, but doesn't seem fully connected. Now Stokely. <laughs> it is no problem. Scott starting out the round five for five. And even more so since the previous tee shot on four, the rain has picked up. And it's legitimate. <laughs> it's definitely coming down. Temps in the mid to high 80s, and plenty of humidity on the island. If you like humid and hot, this is the place to be. You probably can't pack your double G jerky, although I am missing it right now. I would have brought it, but I didn't want to have to fight with customs or get in trouble for bringing food into the country. I don't know how that works, but I didn't want to risk it. Hole number six, this is a brand new hole that you probably haven't seen before. Just 197 feet, of course. You see the Mando arrow there. You must go to the left of that. If you miss the Mando, you go to the drop zone. Also, if you go out of bounds, you go to the drop zone. And Philo not getting the ground play he was hoping for. Scott from way out, just kind of launching it up there. And Tommy, again, that's three in a row where he's drawn metal. <laughs> Tommy, who hails from Finland. High right side for Philo so he doesn't connect. Pachet with the chance to take the honors on the tee. And makes it look so easy. Pachet's 
PDJ number 197036. He's played in just four PDJ events. Or a correction. Yeah, in 2022, he played in four PDJ events, all in Thailand. He played here at the Samui Swine, where he took third. As I mentioned, Tommy took that down. He won the Padia Disc Golf Open and the Godfather Classic presented by Chiang Mai. He took second at last year. And he also took third at the Padia Disc Golf Open 2. But they had two events both last year, one in February, one in December. Pretty incredible to already have a 980 rating and just four events under his belt. Uh, it's raining. And I did not bring an umbrella along. The nice guy, as he's called, handed me an umbrella just after these tee shots. Thank God. As Stokely actually goes to the right and out of bounds. And there's out of bounds everywhere on this hole. You can see the flags on the left side. If you go deep more than five or six meters, you're going to be out of bounds. And then Stokely went out of bounds to the right. <laughs> And we just turned it up another notch on the rain. So you do have to be careful here because as you see Philo putting with OB directly behind the basket. Now a short range putt you probably not too much to worry about but it could take a nasty roll and could easily find OB. A little frustration from Philo. Help with a mark, and Scott is going to save par. So even with the OB stroke, he's going to keep a clean scorecard and off to a great start, five under through seven. I think the morning crew that was out here playing in the other divisions were ecstatic at this point that they were already off the course for the day. As you can see, it's only intensifying. And I promise you this, I wasn't laughing at the time while recording this. I was completely drenched, but not. <laughs> but Chet, make makeshift umbrella there. I was completely drenched at that point but now at least my camera is protected. We head over to hole eight, another new one. You must navigate over the, the ditch area there and there is a Mando. Off in the distance, you see the T of nine. That'll give Scott a look, probably from circle two. Putting doesn't seem to be a problem for him at all so far today. And very similar territory there for Philo. <laughs> and if you think it's difficult to concentrate while watching what's going on, just think about being out there in the conditions <laughs> in which they're playing in. Oh, and a slip by Tommy. 
That's going to be punishing. That was a routine approach that you know he's making 99 out of 100 times in good conditions. So Scott comes up short. And off on the right side is Pichette. So he's looking at a par. Now Philo, similar distance to Stokely. A little bit closer. And again, off the left side. It's just infuriating to think about your grip and everything that's not going right as you're dealing with these nasty conditions. Yeah, is right. We head over to hole number nine. Uh, there's a couple different ways to go at this hole. I think it's incredible anyone that wants to go up that gap that's right-handed because I feel like the high stalling hyzer shot or even the low skip hyzer shot, I feel like are both really high percentages. But there's a number of players that like to go up that middle, more direct route. I also don't throw a forehand, so I can't speak to it. But that feels like the shot all day long. So Philo's going to have a look from somewhere around middle of the circle. A higher route here by... Tommy, that also should pay off for a look at birdie. And this is exactly why I don't like this much closer route, is just because you still have a ton of trees to contend with if you miss your initial shot, just as we're seeing by Scott here. <laughs> I do appreciate Scott asking if I'm ready to go. He, by no means does any player have to wait for a cameraman. Uh, but when they're conscious of it, it does certainly help, especially in conditions of this nature. And now, in a few minutes later, it does actually start to fall off just a little bit in terms of the, wet, uh, the rain. But Philo, another missed putt. You see Pachat just standing at this point. Casual water, casual stance, whatever the case might be. You're just going to get in there and own it. Because if your foot's not getting wet on that shot, it's probably getting wet on the next hole. But Tommy picks up a birdie going with that high stall hyzer route. Stokely's going to put his first blemish on the scorecard after the incredible start. He's now just four under through nine. Self-reflection for Philo is... Take a look at the conditions out there. We head over to hole number 10, just two left on this front half. This also is a variation of what we saw a few years ago. And even though it landed in a puddle of water, that's going to be a great shot for Tommy. There's OB on the right-hand side. You see the flags. There's no OB on the left side. Actually, that's 
runs somewhat parallel to hole number four's fairway. And a great shot by Philo. Not a route I would have ever thought of. Of course, I'm not Scott Stokely. But goes up and over on the left side. Rather than playing the high stalling or the low hyzer shot, back end hyzer, he goes with the high overhand. <laughs> I don't know if he can make it look any easier. A putter is pretty much on fire. The only mistake he's had came from a result of a bad drive and a bad approach on the last hole. So Stokely goes to 5-under through the first 10. Pachette trying to get to 3. Just dead center. I'm trying to place it. Maybe you guys can help me. When it comes to lefty putters... Who do you who do you see? Who does he resemble when it comes to a lefty putting stance and stroke? I really don't have that answer. I'm trying to think of who exactly it is. He reminds me of someone, but I can't remember who as Philo. Doesn't seem pleased, but he's gonna put in for Birdie nonetheless. He's one back of Stokely. And Tommy picks up another birdie. We're heading into our 11th and final hole of the front nine. I've been working on our disc golf shop. If you want to check out shop.thediscgolfguy.com, that is a great place for you to pick up some disc golf goods, a lot of stock inventory, but also some of the latest releases. Just as this day was unfolding was also the day of the Macbeth release for 2023 and of course we've got all those on the site nice compact forehand for Philo right next to the pan we're heading right back toward hole number one and the overall tournament central. And the quick overhand by Stokely, no problem. Please do all the YouTube things, like, share, subscribe. I appreciate the heck out of you guys taking in the action. Oh, and from way downtown. No problem. Tommy's strung a few birdies together now. I needed to make it. It was so nice. <laughs> he loved how it was framed up. So tell me who he looks like as a putter from the left-hand side. Like, share, subscribe. Maybe be, think about being a Patreon member or supporter if you want. But I'm going to have giveaways as always. Got to thank everyone who is part of supporting what we have going on for the coverage. Big shout out to Luke and Nigel and the whole crew here at Samui Disc Golf. That's all I've got, folks. That's the front 11. Join us for the back half. Scott Stokely, six under to the front. We'll see you in the back for round number one's conclusion. <laughs>